Hello friends, this video on electric circuits part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 10 before going ahead with part 11. First law that we will study is the Kirchhoff's law. <coughs> Named after the physicist Kirchhoff who deduced it. So in Kirchhoff's law, we have two laws basically. The first one is the junction law, which is also referred to as the Kirchhoff's first law. And the second one is the loop law, which is also known as Kirchhoff's second law. So the first law, that is the junction law, it talks about the junctions in a circuit. It will talk about only the junction in a circuit and the second law, and that is why it is known as a junction law. The second law, that is the loop law, will talk about closed circuits, that is closed loops. So it is known as loop law. So you will see that both these laws will be extremely helpful to calculate uh, the current or potential difference across complicated circuits. Because till now, Ohm's law is the only law which governed the current in a circuit. But Ohm's law is not capable of... Um, it, it is not good enough to find out the current flowing through a complicated circuit if it has some three to four meshed loops and if it has multiple voltage sources, right? So Ohm's law is not enough. So therefore, Kirchhoff's law will play a vital role in solving complicated circuits. So let us first look at the Kirchhoff's junction law. So what does this junction law state? It states that at a junction, sum of currents entering the junction is equal to the sum of currents leaving the junction. What, first of all, what do I mean by a junction? Junction is any point in a circuit. Let us up. So junction is just a point in a circuit. So at any point, the amount of current that is entering should be equal to the amount of current which is leaving. I mean, why is it so? I mean, why did this law come up? This, that's because we know that charges never, I mean, in a circuit, charges keep flowing from one point to another. They do not accumulate at one point. Now, see, if charges are not accumulating at a point, that means if I consider any point in the circuit at that point, if some charges are coming in, some charges are going out as well, so that the net charge at that junction is zero, right? So, it is very logical and it is logical. I mean, it is very simple to think about as well because we say that charges will not accumulate at any point. So if charges keep moving, that means there is current flow in the circuit. That means if we pick up just any point on the circuit, in that point, there will be no charge accumulation. So that the amount of current coming in will be equal to the amount of current going out at that point. So let us suppose I consider a point where... Let us say this is a point. This is my junction. And we say that some I1 current is coming in at this point. Some I3 is also coming in. Some I4 is going out. I2 is coming in. I5 is going out. So if you look at this junction, I1, I2 and I3 are the currents which are coming into the junction. And I4 and I5 are the currents which are going out of the junction. So according to Kirchhoff's junction law, the amount that sum of the currents entering the junction, that is I1 plus I2 plus I3, should be equal to the sum of the currents leaving the junction, that is I4 plus I5. Right? So this is what is Kirchhoff's law. Right? Okay. So now let us look, I will tell you the application, you must be thinking that this is such a simple law, will it have any application in solving problems? Yes, it will have. I will tell you that when we start solving problems. I will specifically tell you where this junction law helps. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.